Good evening, and it's great to have you with us here on this Tuesday night. There is a lot to get to this evening, beginning with the outbreak connected to the White House now growing tonight, reaching the Pentagon. The Joint Chiefs of Staff, America's top military leaders, all of them but one, are now in quarantine after being exposed to the virus, after a Coast Guard admiral tested positive after attending an event at the White House. Tonight, the president back at the White House after he timed that return to play out as Americans were watching the evening news here last night. And his messages now that he's back at the White House drawing outrage from some. That final gesture from the balcony taking off his mask and the video message shortly thereafter talking about how he feels great. The president did not update Americans on the first lady or any of the staffers at the White House who are now battling this virus. Those images today from inside the White House, workers in protective suits disinfecting the White House briefing room and the press office. And now the outbreak linked to the White House is still growing. A military aide who carries the so-called nuclear football for the president now testing positive. A presidential valet testing positive as well. And of course at the Pentagon, that admiral from the Coast Guard positive too leading to that mass quarantine at the Pentagon. 28 days until Election Day, millions already voting, of course. The president now saying he is looking forward to the next debate that's nine days away between the president and Joe Biden, but his doctor would not promise on that front yesterday. He offered little new information on the president's condition today and the VP debate, of course, tomorrow night. But Vice President Mike Pence now says he does not want on that stage tomorrow night as he debates Senator Kamala Harris. It is a lot this evening, and we'll guide you through it all, beginning with our chief White House correspondent, Jonathan Carl. A surreal scene at the White House. Workers in hazmat suits disinfecting the briefing room. Much of the West Wing empty today as staff stay away from the coronavirus hot zone at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. And now the Trump administration's COVID outbreak has reached the Pentagon. Joint Chiefs of Staff forced to quarantine after Admiral Charles Ray, the vice commandant of the Coast Guard, tested positive today. It's impossible to say where he was infected, but Admiral Ray attended an event at the White House a week ago Sunday. A Pentagon spokesman says even though the military leadership now must work from home, quote, there is no change to the operational readiness or mission capability of the U.S. armed forces. It comes amidst a flurry of new cases at the White House, including one of the president's military aides. That's one of the people who carry the so-called nuclear football, a presidential valet, one of the people who serves his meals, and two more staffers in the press office. And now, senior advisor Stephen Miller, who is also married to the vice president's communications director. All told, at least 24 people who have been at the White House over the past 10 days have tested positive. As for President Trump, He's recuperating in the White House residence after three days in the hospital. His doctor released a short statement saying the president, quote, reports no symptoms and continues to do extremely well. The president's carefully choreographed return from the Walter Reed Medical Center was designed to project an image of strength and health, even as his doctors say he is not out of the woods. After he walked up the steps to the south portico, the president dramatically removed his mask, even though he is still contagious, and there were others, including a White House photographer nearby. Once inside, he made a video to say he feels great. He didn't mention the first lady or his staffers who have tested positive. He said people shouldn't be afraid of a virus that has already killed more than 210,000 Americans. Don't let it dominate. Don't let it take over your lives. Don't let that happen. But the president had just spent three days in one of the most advanced hospitals in the world, receiving the kind of aggressive treatment available to virtually nobody else, including an antibody treatment that has been given to a total of less than 10 people outside of a clinical trial. His statement enraged some of those who have lost loved ones. Amanda Klutz, the widow of Nick Cordero, who died after 95 days in the hospital, offered this message on Instagram. Have some empathy. Why are you bragging? Have empathy to the Americans that you are our leader. Have some empathy to the people who are suffering and grieving. And we spoke with Aaron Birch of Montrose, Michigan, so, who lost his mother to the virus. The statement that he made last night where, where he said that, you know, don't fear coronavirus and don't let your life be, you know, dominated by coronavirus. Um, my life has been redefined by coronavirus. But even now, the president is suggesting COVID-19 is no worse than the flu. Twitter flagged that tweet for misinformation. And so far this year, more people have died of coronavirus than have died of the flu over the past five years combined.
you don't get a pandemic that kills a million people and it isn't even over yet with influenza. So it is not correct to say it's the same as flu. It has some overlapping symptomatology early on, but flu doesn't do the things to you that COVID-19 can. Late today that he's now pulling out of talks to strike a stimulus deal saying uh, no deal until after I win. And of course, uh, millions of Americans are waiting to hear, waiting to receive help during this continuing crisis. Uh, that's for sure. This came in a tweet. He said that he had directed his representatives to stop negotiating with Democrats until after the election. The tweet sent the stock market tanking. Uh, but the bottom line, David, is despite the economic anxiety that so many are now feeling across the country, the people I've spoken to on Capitol Hill actually didn't think that those talks were going anywhere anyway. All right, John Carl leading us off again tonight. John, thank you. And from the moment we knew this virus struck the White House there, of course, were the questions, could this impact the security of this country in any way? And of course, now that quarantine involving the Joint Chiefs. So let's get right to ABC's Chief Global Affairs Correspondent, Martha Raddatz, also with us live tonight. And Martha, this nearly has all of the Pentagon leadership in quarantine tonight. David, this is simply unprecedented to have almost all the Joint Chiefs quarantined like this, having to work from home. Even after 9-11, when the building was hit by an airliner, they worked out of the Pentagon. The Pentagon is, of course, insistent that this is not a national security threat. And the chiefs and the chairman do live in secure military housing and can carry out their duties from there. But however prudent it is that these generals and admirals are quarantining, it is humiliating to have our nation's highest military officials all confined to their homes. And you can bet our adversaries are getting a good laugh out of it. David. Well, you mentioned that laugh, Martha. Obviously, they all can work from home. But some are asking, does this in any way make the U.S. vulnerable as our adversaries watch all this unfold? Well, the Pentagon, again, just insists there is no more vulnerability, and they really can carry out their duties. But it is embarrassing. David? Arthur Raddatz with us live tonight as well. Thank you. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.